In this video, I'd like to show you how I feel that onslaughts break the game in the way they currently function, especially on Nightman. Okay, here's how they work. When you make contact with an alien, the alien aggressiveness tape starts moving. And when it reaches the edge between the difficulty settings, then an onslaught is triggered. An onslaught is uh, the game spawns a lot of aliens, and they make a beeline for your squad, and you have to fight them to the death for the onslaught to end. And here's the first problem with it, is that the game doesn't give you any choice except fighting all of them, killing all of them, and then it's over. You cannot physically, you're not allowed to get to the APC to get out of the map, or just hide and while they're still in the room hoping they, they lose your track or something. You have to fight them to the end. And that removes the, the player choice of the way he can engage in an onslaught. Because the game makes a big effort early in the game in the Dead Hills map to show you that you can you can go in and fight. You can do fighting retreats where you can just run back to the APC or you can do anything in between. However, the onslaught system basically breaks all of that and forces this tower defense minigame because in most cases you need sentry guns or really good tactics to survive it, especially late in the game. And the second problem is it can strategically stun lock you in the map. So let me show you this example. <clears throat> yeah, this is somewhere mid game, I think, or late game, I'm not sure. So on this basement floor, you start up here, then you have to make your way through a maze of tunnels to get through this choke point, and then there's a huge battle up here because those areas are blocked off. And this is a pretty big battle. I place five sentry guns, and it's manageable, but three out of five sentry guns are out of ammo by the end of this battle, and the other two uh, might be get eaten by aliens. Then after this battle, there's another boss battle with the queen in the next floor where you get locked in the room with the queen as the game keeps spawning warrior drones and there's electrical towers that can zap you unless you dodge them. So it makes sense for me as a player to, after this situation, try to whelm myself in the room to rest or get back to the APC to, to go, come in the next day. And here's where the strategic stun lock happens. Okay, let's imagine I'm over here and my squad is half chewed up. There's only three guys alive. One has to be carried. And I have to make, make my way back to the APC over here. So I have to go through that choke, choke point. And there's an alien hive spawn over here and a hive spawn over here. And there's usually one or two aliens patrolling this block. So if I make one tiny mistake, I can get spotted. Then the tape triggers an onslaught and it creates a battle I can't win. And I think that's the third problem. Once you experience with the game, you can tell when an onslaught starts whether it's even worth trying to fight it because you can tell the volume of aliens that are coming at you and you compare it against the firepower that's still left in your squad. And then you make a subtraction in your mind, then you know whether it's worth trying or not worth trying. And basically in Onslaught, you know before it even starts how it's going to end. And here's what I would like to suggest is to allow players to flee an Onslaught. I think I understand why the developers probably block players from fleeing onslaughts. So my guess is that during play testing, when they play on lower difficulty loads, players could just just escape to the APC or take an elevator to a different floor just to escape from the onslaught. However, well, on nightmare difficulty, just escaping from a regular group of veins that's not even an onslaught can be extremely difficult, and that's already hard enough. And stun locking the player into the map, having to fight all the aliens that come at you. Uh, it's just too difficult, and it, it doesn't make sense from a law perspective, too, because in the movie, the first time the Marines do a fighting retreat, if you watch the movie, uh, they're in the Hiver area, then they get overrun by the aliens, or ambushed, and they make a fighting retreat back to the APC, up to the point where they go into the APC, squeeze the door shut, and the alien sticks its nose um, through the door, and you know what then happens. Uh, <clears throat> and in the movie, they didn't have to wait in front of the APC and wait for all the aliens to get killed by them before the APC opens the door. So, to get back to the suggestion, what the game should do is allow players to flee onslaughts. Because then the game preserves all the choices that it teaches the player early on in the, in the early maps. So, when an onslaught happens, here's how I think it should happen. Onslaught is triggered, then the aliens don't know exactly where you are. Let's say you're somewhere here and an onslaught happens. And in this hive, the alien spawns a large number of, of drones or whatever aliens. And then the game AI does a systematic search pattern where they move in groups of two or three and they go through each room. And you as a player have three choices. You can fight them head on, create a lot of noise, pull them in to fight them. 
Or you can try to out stealth them, just hide in rooms, move around so they can't see you, maybe weld some doors. Until they leave you alone. Or you can do a fighting retreat running back to the APC. Because then the choice is preserved and you can still fight and try to fight. So it's not over before it's even started. And also consider the game is already difficult enough without an onslaught starting. So on, if I'm Nightmare, let's say I win this battle and I got two or three minutes left. I'm trying to sneak the way to the APC. Even without an onslaught triggering, if one drone sees me over here, that's a hive spawn, that's a hive spawn, and warrior drones keep pouring out. I got six or seven on my tail. And if you got two guys left and one guy being carried, you won't make it that distance to the APC, unless you have extreme luck or sentry guns already set up. So it would still keep the game hard enough, even if you could escape onslaughts, and it would make it more realistic, and it would preserve the player choice on how to play an onslaught. Because I think the game, later in the game, or even mid-game, the game suffers, I think, a lot from the game being, the player being stuck in linear choices, in linear boss battles, and the onslaughts are basically linear boss battles that that appear to be dynamic, but they're only dynamic in where they can appear, but they, they play out always uh, the same time, not the same way.